Welcome to the VH1 Music Diaries. This is a show where we break down the international music scene in India, then build it back up and give it all to you. This is where it all goes down and it's going down tonight. I am P-Man and I'm going to take you first with me to meet an awesome human being and a fantastic musician. Superstar EDM DJ Marv Paisa is in the middle of a countrywide tour, dubbed the Maximum Fun 2015 tour. I caught her right in the middle of it during a Mumbai leg and asked her, what's up Ma? Let's check out what she had to say. I am here today with the mother of electronica, Ma Faiza, the superstar DJ from India and it's an honor to have her here, mistress of electronica. Welcome to the VH1 Music Diaries. Thank you. You're in the middle of your maximum fun tour and uh, it's crazy you're doing these cities which I've never heard of gigs happening over there, you know, like Bilaspur, you're off to Surat now. How are these gigs going? What are the crowds coming like? Tell me everything about these shows. Well, it's, it's mind-blowing for me as well. It's super exciting. New cities are opening up. Um, I wouldn't say a scene is fully developed there, but a scene is definitely moving there. And my gigs have been, I can only say, insane. I've put videos up. There's people weeping at the gigs. There's people screaming. I, I feel like, you know, there's so much energy. People want to move. People want to go mad. People really want to have, like, maximum energy. And I rock up to their city in the middle of nowhere. It takes me 12 hours, three flights. I don't know how many car journeys. I come there. I spend three, four hours till four or five o'clock in the morning some of these places are on because they're smaller cities. So it's been absolutely mind-blowing. It's been inspiring. I've met tons of new people. And I say to people, I'm going to Chhattisgarh, and they're like, uh, Ma, like, where is that, you know? Or Bilaspur. What's <laughs> in Bilaspur? But you know what? There are people who want to dance. And there are people who want to have some kind of spiritual connection to the music. So they're like, let's get Ma around. Let's get her there. And, and do you change your set depending on like, you know, if it's a big city or small city or the vibe? Of I go, I do not prepare a set. I am the most unprepared DJ on the planet, I would say. I just go with the flow. I go with about 5,000 tracks. I have some ideas and I am totally spontaneous. So whatever the mood takes me, I will go with it. I, I see what the vibe is of the crowd. I see if energy is moving one track to one track. If I'm halfway in a track and I feel like, oh no, that was a bit low energy then maybe the next track I pick it up or maybe I've just played two insane tracks and, and the crowd's going completely mad and I'm like okay now I'm just going to take it back a bit and uh, you are auctioning these magic hats yeah which I make so uh, it's for a cause it's for charity can you please tell the audience what this magic hat auction is all about <laughs> well actually it comes from something very simple I like to be creative I like to express myself I make a lot of things um, I design a lot of things, and I guess many people don't know that, but my home is filled of these things. So I started making these hats. I bought an amazing hat in Brazil and thought, wow, I'll, I'll just see if I can make something. And I really enjoyed it, but I didn't want to sell it. So I'd made them for friends, and people were like, wow, I really like your hat. And I just thought, how can I now translate this into what I'm doing, where I can make these hats, do it for a good cause, and put them out in the universe and I'm not selling them. So the Maximum Tour was coming up and I was like, okay, every city I would like to contribute. Unfortunately, the earthquake happened in Nepal and we thought, well, that's a perfect opportunity to do something for just one cause. So we're raising money and so far we've got a lack. Wow. That's amazing. People have been bidding. I mean, it's just been incredible. People have been bidding 20,000 rupees for a hat made by Mar Pfizer. So I'm going to go to Nepal with the money in my pocket and find people, real people, who exist, who need help. And I, that's a gift to be able to be in that place. That's so, thanks, guys. Awesome. Thank you. That's, Thank you. That's noble. That's <laughs> no, 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 that's not noble. I'm just, it, it happened, <clears throat> let's not credit me with all these noble thoughts. DJ Robin. <laughs> <laughs> you grew up in London. I did. Uh, so you got into the music scene over there. I did. And uh, what, was, what was happening around you? You know, what was it like growing up in London? All the different kinds of music happening and everything. I was really lucky that I was, I was born in 1970. Um, I, pop music, I was really into. So I saw the whole growth of pop music from 70s, 80s, 90s. And I think that was very precious. And being in London gave me access to music from all over the world, and music from all different genres. You go to London, you can find a night that plays the music that you love. 
doesn't matter how small a genre your music is, there is a night dedicated to you somewhere, which shows how huge it is, the spectrum of music. So I've been involved in music from early on in my life. Play instruments, played in a band, a, a classical uh, band. I used to play the tuba. And then the shift to India happened? <clears throat> it did. I just came on a journey to be, find more about my Indianness because I was awfully British, darling, awfully British. Was it a shock to see things it's so different or were you prepared? I don't know if I was prepared, but I found something here that really touched me and the people really touched me. And I just brought music from there to here at that time and it kind of just had a movement of its own. So I, I came in it in a very random way. Today, I don't know if you could build a career on how I started. You know, it's very, very different. I've never, no one's ever shown me how to DJ. I came from the side trance movement. You know, I was partying a lot when I was in the UK. And like I said, there was a whole range of music, but the real, the party scene that really grabbed me was trance music, psychedelic trance. But the music in Goa got way too hard. I'm just too fluffy. I'm, I just don't have the anger in me, you know. I don't like to see people on the dance floor just like this. I need, I need to see pixies and leprechauns and angels on the dance floor. You know, there are many DJs who just play a BPM, so they're in an a certain style. I kind of try to start off at 125 BPM and go to 145 BPM. Now, there's not many DJs who do that and keep it fluffy, happy, uplifting, positive. I want to see people smiling. You were doing EDM music long before it was called EDM music. You yeah, know? yeah, uh, yeah. People can describe what it was. You yeah. see the scene grow yeah. from what it was yeah. at that time to what it is now. How do you see this journey Indian electronic music has had over the years? I think it's beautiful. I think we're in a much better space. I've witnessed it. I've been part of it. Um, I think it's been a great honor. And I think the music is, is getting only more diverse. It's getting more interesting in terms of everybody wants to come to India now to come and perform here. So I think it's a great platform. Where it goes from here is going to be the interesting. What are your predictions? Oh my God, I'm like predicting my prophecy, the Ma prophecy. Um, I hope it doesn't go too commercial. My only fear is uh, India tends to be influenced by a lot of hype and actually, you know, f the India I know is connected to the soul and I think we need to st stick with the soul of things and not, you know, too much of the, the hype. Diversity is the key of everything. I think that's brilliant. That's going to be my new mantra. Diversity, key to life. <laughs> I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to stick with that. The most memorable gig you've had. Okay, interesting one. I played at the Dead Sea, which is the lowest point on the planet. And I played in like a tower and there were three levels and I was on the top of this tower and you had to climb up scaffolding to get to like a pyramid. So you're on the top of this pyramid. And the breeze there, and it was a full moon and I had the whole view of the Dead Sea. And behind me, they had made a giant armchair that was 20 feet high and it had like 50 people sitting on this giant pink velvet armchair, which was looking out on the Dead Sea. That was quite a epic experience. The wind, the lights, the full moon, the lowest point in the planet. I felt something like that. that was. What, according to you, makes a great DJ? Wow, I think it's really simple. Play the music you love. Because many DJs don't do that. Oh, uh, saying that, can you tell me some of your favorite DJs from our Indian scene right now? Wow, uh, there's quite a few, you know. I meet a lot of resident DJs who nobody knows and they do such beautiful opening for me, you know. Incredible mixing. I, I had a, a very unknown DJ called DJ Shine who opened for me in Hyderabad recently. He was absolutely incredible, flawless. I was like, dude, I don't even want to play right now. You continue for another two, three checks because, ooh, nice set, you know. Um, there's DJs like Anki Tricks, uh, I like very much, it's very positive energy. For me, I need positive music, I need melodies. Uh, girl DJs, Aisha, 
She's uh, a brilliant DJ, technically and music-wise, and super positive energy. You know, you really can see they love what they do. Awesome. <laughs> All the best for the tour. Thank you. Off camera, I'm going to ask her about some of those mad things that happen in the club in Berlin. More VMD coming up.